This is Reframe, the podcast from the College of Education, Health, and Society on the campus of Miami University. In this episode, we explore the unique parallels that appear to be emerging between teachers and physicians, especially in light of new federal efforts to impose an array of politically mandated reforms. For physicians, this may serve as a cautionary tale. For teachers, it may be an opportunity to gain a stronger political voice. But for both groups, it should serve as a call to action. To the casual observer, there might not appear to be many similarities between the educational system and the healthcare industry. But according to Andrew Saltz, assistant professor in Miami University's College of Education, Health, and Society, the common ground between school teachers and primary care physicians goes much deeper and potentially carries much more impact than either group may realize. Of course, both fields attract caring and compassionate professionals dedicated to the improvement and well-being of others. But at a much more systemic level, both are also facing increasing legislative pressure to conform to various data-driven performance management metrics and outcome-based measurements. For most teachers, this is nothing new. For years, educators have been forced to endure intense political scrutiny, and they have tried to push back against a long list of regulatory reforms. But for physicians, the threat of independently imposed quality control standards intended to quantify, measure, and incentivize performance is all very new. But this political lens has begun to turn its gaze toward the healthcare industry, and though it is not yet at the level faced by teachers, Saltz believes it eventually will be. The use of data will continue to expand in healthcare as it has in education. Healthcare is moving in a direction that's very data-driven, that's very outcomes-oriented. Um, you've seen some of this already in, in surgery. Uh, mm-hmm. Surgeons will calculate kind of the risk of the surgery and not want to, some surgeons might not want to operate on someone if the risk are too high because they're evaluated at the percentage of successful surgeries, uh, for example. And so I think um, you've seen it in, in that field, but I think um, from my understanding, in healthcare, they're, they're looking to evaluate other physicians in, in a similar manner. In a new academic article titled, Measuring Outcomes, Lessons from the World of Public Education, Saltz and his co-author, Professor of Family Medicine John Saltz, state that this growing trend in healthcare is partly a response to a decrease in overall quality and an increase in overall costs, which lawmakers hope to mitigate by enforcing a system that would, ideally, boost the efficiency and effectiveness of primary care physician-patient services. The problem, however, is that legislators are assuming that the data that would be used to design such quality control measurements is both accurate and actionable, which it very often is not. Furthermore, Saltz also sees a danger of employing value-added models to measure and incentivize individual performance. Many have decried value-added models because they only prioritize end results over continuous improvements to actual practices. Such models, they argue, are typically best reserved for business-related fields and not necessarily those that prioritize goals beyond just efficiency and productivity alone. This is all very similar to what has already occurred in education, and SALT sees parallels that can benefit both industries going forward. First, because this problem has continued to unfold over the last two decades for teachers, past and present political machinations to reform education should serve as both a wake-up call and a learning opportunity for physicians who may soon find themselves in a similar situation. Secondly, it also represents a renewed opportunity for the teachers themselves, who could potentially leverage the social capital of physicians to gain a new sense of empowerment and support. I think one thing that teachers did was resisted to the reform to the degree that they weren't a part of even shaping any of it. And so I I do think that physicians have perhaps more of a capability than teachers did or chose to have uh, in terms of shaping this reform moving forward. Teachers were first forced down this road at the state level in the 1980s, and then at the federal level beginning with the No Child Left Behind Act in 2002. Since then, performance management has become a way for lawmakers to leverage data-driven metrics to establish standardized requirements by which teachers and schools are evaluated and then rewarded or punished based on the results. This has placed teachers under increasing pressure to meet an array of politically mandated standards designed to maximize efficiency and effectiveness across schools, and it sparked fierce debates among educators and lawmakers alike, both of whom often view this issue from very different perspectives. 
Proponents argue that performance management is a way to improve public institutions while building public trust. But critics see these metrics as unfair or inconsistent or even completely misaligned with the nature of other important teaching goals, such as those that require patience, compassion, understanding, thoroughness, and even personalized student attention. This is what has resulted in the unintended consequences to which Saltz refers, including the damage to teacher morale, the loss of local community control, constantly shifting educational policies, an increase in frustration, anxiety, and uncertainty among educators, as well as a narrowing of purpose, which has incentivized teachers to prioritize high standardized test scores above all else. This problem is still sweeping across the educational landscape today, and Saltz believes it to be a fate physicians can avoid if, that is, they are willing to take a more preemptive and proactive role in the political reform process. So far, this is what teachers have failed to achieve. Most feel as if performance management regulations have been unfairly thrust upon them, and even though education is already entangled in policies that can potentially depersonalize, disempower, and delocalize the profession, there are still ways to achieve more positive outcomes. One of the, the things EHS can get out of this, and teachers in particular, is one of the ways to think about policy is across disciplines. And I think that oftentimes we get so siloed that we forget these phenomena are happening in other places. And, you know, what if teachers and physicians got together and said, well, wait a minute, the use of data in this way is not helpful to students. It's not helpful to patients as people have kind of other things in the back of their mind to think about rather than what's best to educate the student or what's best for this patient at this moment. And so you're introducing a lot of kind of noise into situations. And I wonder about the possibility of creating coalitions across these disciplines uh, to have a louder voice. Saltz is not only calling for proactive involvement among healthcare professionals. He's also urging both parties, both teachers and physicians, to come together upon a common political ground to re-examine an overbearing measurement paradigm that threatens to undermine the nature of their true work. Just like primary care physicians, teachers exist on the front lines of society, and they are in the best position to advocate for more support and more understanding, instead of more quality controls and more measurement standards and more political reform policies that can often do more harm than good. But first, teachers, just like physicians, need to get more involved in the political process. I think we have a lack of teacher voice in our policies, that we have policymakers who by and large are not educators, do not have education backgrounds. And as a result, they're viewing education through a lens of what might work in business or in other sectors, and they're not understanding uh, the complex uh, classroom climate and, and details of being a teacher to the degree they could. And so I, I think that, you know, teachers have an opportunity. I, I mean, I know they're overwhelmed and, and whatnot, but I hope to find allies to help teachers kind of rise up and have a stronger voice in these policies. And whether that means attending school board meetings or actually serving on school boards, running for office, or even forming interdisciplinary coalitions with healthcare professionals, it will require action.